you know what the voting results were? Was uh, everyone sucks. Yeah, everyone does <laughs> suck there because everyone at the table's too sheepish to speak up and be like, hey, calm down. It's going to be fine. We're chalking this one up too. That's a, a failed, failed relationship. Everyone sucks. Everyone sucks. <laughs> right, it was right. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Powered by Piedmontese podcast. Uh, joined here today with, you know him, Joe. How you doing? Oh, doing well. Kind of out of my element here being in the afternoon today, though. Yeah, you know, normally, we do more morning podcasts uh, where we have the whole day ahead of us. Now we're on the tail end. That's right. We've done a lot of work today, so you know we've got a lot on our minds. So hopefully we're sharp almost, as ever. Almost quitting time. Well, we had an interesting week. Uh, we made uh, our brand made it into a pretty famous podcast. That's right. Two bears, one cave. Yep. Well, what a cool, cool way to get that certain plug in there. And we, what people, we have great relationships with a lot of celebrity people out there, and these people like to celebrate our brand. It's awesome, and they love our product. Which obviously, who doesn't? Once you've tried it. And uh, Tom Segura in there made a comment about our hot dogs, and we sold a blinding amount of hot dogs uh, in just two ex- days. A couple expletives in there with his description of the hot dog, but certainly seemed like he enjoys them. Very fitting for those guys, though. And so it's always nice to get these these shout outs, you know, getting these shout outs by Rogan, getting a shout out by these guys, and they're all friends. Absolutely. And like, it's amazing how much and they all live in Austin. I don't maybe Bert uh, doesn't live in Austin. Bert's in California. Ah. I mean he should probably move to Austin. People are probably, you know, <laughs> trying to poach him every day. It's too hot to live in Austin for me. Oh. But, uh, uh, in Nebraska, we're getting a heat wave this weekend. Kind of a shame. It's fall. It's time for the cooler weather. It's a little upsetting, but We'll move on. We'll find we'll find peace. All four seasons, and you never know when when which season's going to show up. Uh, well, last week, Joe, I picked out three stories um, that kind of had you in mind, right? Well, today I found a couple that have me in mind. Good. Yeah, I, I took it easy on myself, so don't get too excited here. Oh. But are we ready to d- dig into this one? I think so. I think again, you're gonna like this. It comes up, but you'll know that it kind of fits in with with who I am as a cook. So. Am I the a-hole for putting sauce on my steak? Here we go. I don't like that look you're giving me. Here we go. I, 32 male, have been dating my girlfriend, 32 female, for just under a year. We have, and I think, a really good relationship so far. So I'm a bit puzzled by a fight we recently had and want to know if I was in the wrong. About a week ago, she asked if she could come over to my house and make me a nice meal. I told her, well, of course. Why would I turn that down? She came over with a couple porterhouse steaks, some corn on the cob, potatoes, and asparagus. She proceeded to grill everything but the potatoes, which she boiled in my kitchen. She was busy cooking, so I took it upon myself to set the table out on my back deck. I included candles as well as what I considered basic spices and condiments, such as salt, pepper, butter, and steak sauce. When my girlfriend served up the two plates full of food, she saw the bottle of steak sauce that I had included, and she said, Oh, hell no. This is a good cut of steak, and I seasoned it well. Don't you dare put steak sauce on it. I did a couple of bites of the meat naked, but while it was tasty, I just really missed the slight tangy taste of that sauce. I think it complements a good cut of meat. I told her that I couldn't have done a much better job myself, but due to my own taste, I wanted to use the small amount of sauce to enhance the flavor, and she got really, really mad. Feel bad already for this guy or gal? We'll see. I think that she's being unfair and she took it too personally. I just happen to like steak sauce, even on a really good steak. But maybe since she sprung for a couple good cuts of meat and was nice enough to cook them for us, I should have just eaten my meal the way she wanted me to. What do you think? Was I wrong? I'm a bit conflicted on that one because steak sauce has a very negative connotation. Sure does. But, you know, I myself... Never put steak sauce because I firmly believe that a good steak. Never? Well, like A1. I don't use Heinz 57, A1, those types of steak sauces. And I think that's what gives a steak sauce a bad rap is, you know, the A1 steak sauce. It's a powerful brand in America, though. That it is because I think people are used to eating inferior beef. Yeah, true. Make it something a little bit more enjoyable. Or palatable. Yeah. But so I I never use it on the steaks that I cook myself because, you know, obviously I'm, you know, well seasoning and preparing every steak that I cook for sure. But, you know, like an au poivre sauce, I think that's delightful on a steak. So that's where my change is, is I'm not necessarily a steak sauce. I'm more of a sauce on my steak. I don't know if that distinguished makes, but like you're right, uh, a whiskey cream sauce. I like to recently, I do like a, a white wine scampi sauce. So I don't do seafood. 
right? But I'll make this butter, white wine, herb, garlic, chili sauce, and I'll put that with my steak. It's just nice to change it up every once. And I don't think that that's wrong. No, I don't think so either. But I think the the dreaded Heinz 57 and A1 steak sauce, that gives the steak the steak sauce brand or name kind of a dirty word, whereas sauce on your steak sounds quite nice. Okay, let me check something out here. Okay, so it's in his house. So he's fishing through his fridge. Like, ideally, like, if this was cooked in her house, she wouldn't have steak sauce probably in the first place. But this guy, he's already got a bot. He's out on the table. Don't you think she's maybe a little too upset about this? Yeah, but also kudos to her for, you know, going on an away game at her boyfriend's no, house yes. and nailing two porterhouse steaks. That's just the steaks. She cooked the whole meal. Yeah. So, I mean, that's 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 a pretty tall task, but... And one other thing that I'll have to point out here is she actually, or he, he, the poster, actually said what steak it is. So that's the first story we've read in in almost five weeks. And also two porterhouses? Like, yeah, she, she went balling on that. I hope they were hungry. So on a big steak like this too. So here's another good point. It doesn't specify if they're drinking wine or anything like that yet, but if you're doing a big porterhouse, so in this case you have a nice um, filet mignon, uh, at least, what, an inch and a half thick or wide, and then a New York strip, that's a lot of steak to have that same flavor over and over again. So it's having a little bit of sauce. Or like in our restaurant here, they're going to put a jus at the bottom of the steak. So again, I think what people think of A1, I think that's the only problem here, is that he's using a traditional steak sauce. A bottled, hyper-processed steak sauce. Whereas, yes, if you put that steak jus that's, you know, reduced beef stock, I mean, that, that elevates any steak you'll ever have. I'm just trying to picture, you know, me and my wife in this instance here. She would never yell at me for putting a little bit of steak on my side. It would never turn into a fight. That's right. This is about you. So so maybe you are a steak sauce guy. No, I'm a sauce on my steak guy. Oh. Again, I love beef. I love all kinds of different cuts, but I love what you can do to beef to change it up. Because if we, you're, we work in a beef company, we have beef four or five times a week. Sue me for wanting a little different flavor. A little spice in your life that's not garlic, yes. salt, and pepper. Yes, that's why I'm such a hoot to hang around. You know, that it's my sauce and my steak that makes me who I am. And the spice of life. Yes. So <laughs> I'm going to side with this guy here. The girl, I mean, yes, she worked hard. I think she worked hard and felt undervalued because he wanted a little extra sauce on the table. Yeah, and, and the way, but the way he made it sound too is like he was longing for that that <laughs> tang on the steak. It's like just eat. That's eat how the he wrote house. the. That's how he wrote the story. I don't know how it was in real life, but yeah, I, I doubt he's sitting there just staring at that steak sauce, just begging for it to make its way on its plate. So, was there an a hole in, in any of this? Uh, he was voted not the a hole. So again, we can agree he didn't do anything violent here. He didn't scream at his partner. We've heard that before already in these episodes. So, yep, not the a-hole, but yeah, just interesting. I think it's going to be, people will be highly uh, divided on this. Uh, there was 10,000 votes on this. So wow. this is a big issue. I Apparently. Yeah. So uh, anyway, next time you're at, I don't know if, again, it's not going to happen with you apparently, but if there's A1 on the table or in the fridge, just get rid of it. Find something else. What a hot button topic. Yeah, I love this one. Um, so let's move on. Uh, this next story. You're going to like this one. Uh, so it's not about me, but our producer, Lily, oh. served up a story. And I don't know if she wrote this story or if it really hits home for her. But again, I thought we'd read it. Okay. So let's get into this one. So am I the a-hole for not wanting to replace my friend's beef jerky? This was two years ago. Not that well engaged, but still a good story. My boyfriend and I recently went on a trip to see my aunt, who was in poor health, a few states away. While we were gone, we asked a friend if he would mind watching our dogs. Now, he has less than an ideal living situation, got a leaky roof, a lot going on to repair. So we told him to bring his dog and he could just stay at our place. We set up the back bedroom for him, told him he was welcome to anything in the fridge or pantry, and we paid him for it. Upon our return, he told us that his phone was being shut off because he couldn't pay it. So he paid his phone bill as well. And then his bar tab at the place we were hanging out at just has an extra thank you. Pretty generous. Wow. I need to be friends with this person. One of the dogs is no, one of our dogs is notorious for eating food that is left out and trash diving. So we don't leave anything down, and we express this to him before we left. But apparently, one night he spent thirty dollars on beef jerky and then left it laying on the coffee table overnight. And of course, our dog ate it. 
Now he's asking me if one of us plans to reimburse him for the beef jerky. I was a little taken back. We paid his phone bill, his bar tab, and paid him cash for watching them too. To me, it just seemed a bit ridiculous. Am I being the a-hole here? No. I, that, that's a, such a tall ask because he got paid to house sit for these people. So he got more than $30 just for sleeping on a warm bed with a, a leakless roof above his head. But my jerky. But yeah, and why is he spending $30 on jerky if he can't even pay his phone bill? Again, there could be a, a cause in here where this guy is really struggling for money where he just needed 30 extra bucks and made up this story about beef jerky. Because who spends $30 on jerky in general? Well, I mean, anymore, one bag is like 10 bucks. You're going to buy three bags of jerky, open them all, and leave them on a coffee table overnight? That seems egregious. Again, I, I, this, to produce jerky, you know, again, we've talked a bit about this in past episodes, whether you're taking bottom round flats or the ends, like you're to find good proteins, I mean, you're going to probably have to spend three to four dollars a pound to get it in. And then to manufacture it and package it, I mean, all in, you're probably still thinking at least four bucks a, a bag of jerky. So standard margin in there to find a good bag of jerky, it's going to be at least eight to 10 bucks. Sure. Across the board. Now, Jack Links, you know, for some of their cheaper beef that they can source in might be a little bit different, but this guy clearly bought some premium jerky. But he, you're right, his house is falling apart. His phone's being shut off. Just a state of disrepair and dilapidation. But also, they paid his bar tab. They paid his phone bill. They paid him for staying at their home. Like, it's time to cut. Almost, would you ignore this guy? Look at, look at the wins that you had in that duration. And then to think about like, oh, man, they owe me 30 bucks because Fido ate my beef jerky. Like, that's ridiculous. You know, to me, I would almost play play this off as not necessarily a joke, but nonchalantly be like, well, we covered your beers last night, so that should make it even. Thanks again for helping us out. Yeah. And just move on. Yeah. And if he presses again, then the gloves come off. Or he'd probably ask like, so uh, when can I come house sit again for you guys? I mean, this. I had a friend in college that, you know, we were borrowing money to all the time, just, you know, five, 10 bucks here and there. And it must be a personality issue here because, yeah, the one time they loan you money, it's like, hey, man, can you pay me back? Like, well, what about the few hundred dollars I've donated you that you haven't paid me back? Yeah. So I, I, I know who this type of person is. You know, like I said, really, like I said, their financial decisions, you can question every one of them. Oh, for sure. I it, just kind of feel bad. Well, and that's because those are the types of folks that don't keep receipts, right? And then they're like, well, I don't owe you 200 bucks. What are you talking about? Yeah, like we just said, like, show me the receipt that you spent $30 on jerky. Right. Show me that. Show me the proof. Show me the tape. But uh, this person was not voted the a-hole. Good. Good. They're not. Are they friends anymore? Would you be friends with this guy? Um, perhaps. <laughs> or uh, one of the comment or commenters here suggested that... Uh, you may say that because of the jerky that your dog ate, that you took him to the vet to make sure he's going to be okay and that you want him now to cover your vet bill. Yes. So whose story is going to win? You know, so uh, pretty easy story. Uh, and Glenn, I hope this has a happy ending, but it, clearly this friendship is doomed. I would agree, especially if they're going to be that nitpicky over that kind of stuff, especially after, you know, they did you a solid. Did me? You're talking about the poster? Yeah. Now, you have dogs. I do. Do you, do you give your dogs human food? No. Well, no, I try not to. Yeah. So in this case, if you know your dog just feasted on human snacks, would you be upset? Kind of, yeah, because then they're going to be itching, itching for the next one. You get that taste. And especially, again, if you're eating premium meat snacks from certified Piedmontese, you got them hooked on something that he can't afford as a, as a, as a dog. That's true. It kind of, you know, and, and that sentiment right there reminds me of when we used to do the farmer's markets many years ago. And there was a gal who would show up every week and buy 10 pounds of ground beef, not for herself, for her dog. And she brought her dog every time, beautiful, humongous Doberman pincher. It was terrifying, but it had this little backpack, saddle pack, and she would put all- The dog did? Yep. And she would put all 10 pounds of ground beef in his little back pack and, and say, well, this is your food. You're carrying it to the car. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. But you know what? That dog's eating pretty pretty nice. If you see a lot of the new dog food commercials out there, dog products, I mean, they're advertising like these mail service food options for your dogs. They're violently expensive. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
And so your normal kibble is like becoming a thing of the the past. Well, and even like those old little Caesar, you know, the wet wet food. I mean, the packaging. Remember them well. But that packaging almost looks like it's human food. Mm-hmm. Smart on them. You know, for us, it's like we could create a, a nice dog snack with some of our bench trim and stuff like that. But I think it's compromising to be a premium steak brand for humans to then also offer a dog product. It's, it's, a, a, con- it's a bit concerning. So maybe we'll revisit that some other time, but it might be a good idea. Might be a million dollar idea. Keep it in the back pocket, Joe. Never know. Uh, third story. This one, I think uh, we can both speak to. Um, it comes up quite frequently um, as an issue, but um, am I the a-hole for refusing to make a $100 20 cut of steak well done? A $100 20? What, what the hell is that? Uh, i sorry. I made a mistake on myself. A $100. <laughs> I can do it again. So let's just move on. So we did an, an extravagant Friendsgiving this year as I lucked into a strip loin of A5 Wagyu for a price that was unorthodox level of cheap. Now, my friend works at a high-end meat distributor and received it as a gift. Please. Please. Anyway, so it was a tight-knit event with only 10 of us there, mostly couples, including my friend, who only started dating a girl within the last couple months. We had an array of dishes, but I was responsible for cooking the meat. Now, steak is the closest thing that I have to a religion, and I take it very seriously. The average steak for me takes about four to five hours to prepare and cook from sous vide to cast iron to plate. Sometimes I take as much as three to four months butter aging or dry aging my meats to be certain that they are perfect. These were genuine A5, so I, I only sous vide them after cutting them into two inch steaks. Now, there was, uh, there was perfect, pretty perfectly enough for one for each, but I also made jerk chicken, mandarin duck breast, and a nice cut off cherry jalapeno salmon. What a spread! Yeah, what a flex. Well, again, her partner works for a meat company. There's benefits to that. I had quite the spread. I sous vide them to medium rare to be sure that the fat was well rendered, but informed them that if it was absolutely necessary, I'd bring them up to medium on request. Well, here comes the new girl to the group. She sees the first person cut into their steak and sees pink, and she's mortified. Immediately, she acts acts of him eating raw meat and stresses that the steak should be brown all the way through or else you'll get sick. Now, I informed her that that wasn't the case, and that these steaks were actually cooked to the ideal temperature for the cut. She immediately demanded that I cook hers till it was brown all the way through, and I firmly said, not a chance. She proceeded to get angry and yell that it was her steak, and she should have liked, she likes it how she wants it. And I told her that there were plenty of other meats to choose from, as well as a plethora of other side dishes, that she could have her steak, because um, that steak was not going to be well done in my house. And she called me an a-hole. She then got up and started to stick the steak in the microwave. Japanese A5. A5 wagon in the microwave. Oh, my God. It's mortifying. Now, I shut up and grabbed it out of her hand. At f- <laughs> Oh, boy. This is escalating. Then the cops show up. <laughs> <laughs> so I shot up and grabbed it out of her hand. At, and at that point, at which half the steak fell onto the ground. Now, my dogs got it quickly to it, which I said, well, at least it to someone who wouldn't crap on a good steak. Now, from there, there was definitely tension from that end of the table. They ate and then hurried to the left. Since then, my longtime friend and his new girlfriend have blocked me on social media and and blocked my phone number. They even gone so far as to block the rest of the people at the table and cut off all ties. Now, yesterday, I received a PayPal invoice from my old friend for $25 that just said, pay for dry cleaning of her dress. I don't think actually anything spilled on her. I think it's just more of the drama. But now that I'm ignoring it and unfortunately probably washing my hands clean of an old friend. Am I the a-hole here? Well, he should block him on PayPal and Venmo, first and foremost. Yeah. I mean, do you get sent a bad debt for a pay- PayPal I, invoice? I think this new girlfriend, all she needed was some steak sauce. <laughs> just to mask the color of the steak? Yeah. You know, just throw some A1 on there. I mean, for the friend now that's not the, the cook here, dating this girl, if I see my new girlfriend act this way, I'm concerned. And these are my friends. And you, you talk about first impressions a lot on this show, but like she, she exploded. Yeah. And also you got to realize like this is Japanese A5 Wagyu. Like I don't even think you could cook that to well done. Even if you, there'd be nothing left. Yeah. It'd render it all away. Now we, I've had Wagyu a few different times and I find that meat that fatty, you need to render it. So like a hot, unless it's really hot, I mean to really quickly render down that fat. Sous vide is the right move here. I'd argue you could smoke it too. 
Um, but yeah, you're going to want to make sure it's rendered nice. And I agree to take that all the way to well done on that expensive of a meat. I mean, that's tough. Well, it was also a very weird description in here. I mean, you and I have cooked a ton of steaks. And yes, every time we cook steak, it's a it's a celebratory time and experience, right? But we're not spending four hours or three months with, with the steak that we're about ready to prepare. A little pretentious here. I mean, that's, that's egregious. Um, but let's not forget, he said that this was, or she, was gifted this A5 from her uh, partner at the meat company. So again, she didn't even pay for it. So does that change your opinion? I, I still don't think so because it's if you want something done right, you do it yourself, right? So it's like, you know what? Thanks for offering, but I'm actually going to cook my own steak. Well, uh, jerk chicken was an option too. And Mandarin duck. I mean, there was the spread was incredible. Yeah. Uh, the cherry jalapeno salmon even sounds nice. I'm not even eat fish, but I mean, that sounds delightful. There's so, something in there other than a well-done steak that you can compromise on. Yes. So that's where I'm concerned again that this this girlfriend and her reaction to something like this, bad news bears. Crazy. Run for it. Yeah. Especially, and then when she's gone, you reach back out to your friend and rebuild that bond. Especially for her to say on the car ride home, block them all on social media. Get rid of their numbers. They're dead to you. Not just him. Everyone at that table. They're all playing a part in this. Did you see how Samantha <laughs> looked at you? Yeah, I mean, awful. And she mentioned that there's couples here, right? Yeah. So it's not just, you know, guys uh, grouping up on a on girl here to get mad at or uh, over the not well done steak. She attacked everybody at the table. So again, like, she needs to go. I feel like it would have been a very tense table, though, because, you know, they just need some, they need some light in that room where it's like, hey, chill out a little bit there, sweetie. Like, it's going to be fine. Okay, here's another, there's an edit to this. Um, it's a pretty sick flex. Oh. You ready for this one? Mm -hmm. So the poster says, I should have stated that a, a menu was sent weeks weeks in advance with the express point that if someone wanted their steak cooked to a higher temperature, I'd I'd go to the grocery store and get some USDA Prime for them. <laughs> what, what? Yeah, wow. <laughs> why, why Prime? So you already have A5 on the table. And so a step down, like, oh, if you want it cooked a little bit more than medium rare, maybe medium... I'll get you the next most expensive steak on the planet. Yeah, if you want like brown all the way through, well done. It's like mm, select it is. Select it is. Yep. You know, or, or again, like we said, have the other meat options, or maybe marbled steak. So, <laughs> I just I can't believe that this. Uh, well, actually, it's kind of funny here. So, you know what the voting results were? Was uh, everyone sucks? Yeah, everyone <laughs> does suck there because everyone at the table's too sheepish to speak up and be like, "Hey, calm down. It's going to be fine." And then I, the real loser here in this whole scenario is the boyfriend. Yes. I mean, he, he must really love her. He lost a, not just one friend. A group. A group. Longtime friends. Yeah. And he's got a potential new, a roller coaster of a girlfriend. Crazy. <laughs> so uh, he, if that relationship ends, this guy's lost. Yep. Over a well-done steak. I mean, what a travesty. An A5 well-done steak. Yeah, but again, he didn't have to pay for it. So that's what kind of bothers me here. And so what's nice, we work with some distributors. You know, as meat comes in in, in high volume, so there's always going to be some cuts that don't get sold. And so, okay, now it's approaching three weeks, four weeks, whatever the case may be. Like, they just write it off or damage it, and then, yeah, give it to one of the employees. So at that point, being free product, even if it was A5 certified, had the Japanese certificate on there, at that point, me, if someone wants it well done, I probably don't give a care anymore. Like, I didn't invest my time into it. So if someone, like, truly, if I, if you're my friend and said your girlfriend, I'm cooking that steak well done for you. Even though your girlfriend's eating it, I'm doing you a solid. And I would expect you to do the same for me. Yeah, I, I suppose. Especially weeks in advance. But also, she had plenty of time to say, like, hey, I like my steaks uh, like shoe leather. So, Well, when he sends this menu out, did this girlfriend get this menu? Because the, the boyfriend might not have actually forwarded it on. So we've got communication issues now as well. Yes. So oh, oh boy. now with two strikes, communication and potential craziness, we're chalking this one up to that's a, a failed failed relationship. Everyone sucks. Everyone sucks. <laughs> right, it was right. Yeah. Well, let's change our episode. Actually, our, a good episode for this uh, title for this episode is just going to be Everyone Sucks. Everyone Sucks. Well, that'll wrap up uh, today's episode, Joe. Uh, Want to hit up with a nice discount code? Yeah, absolutely. So if you head on over to cpbeef.com and use the code 
PBP26 at checkout, you'll get 26% off your entire beef purchase. And I believe we also have one more offer for you. So we're celebrating uh, Californians this week in the office. And so we wanted to create a cut that's perfect for the West Coast. So we're thinking, what about this beautiful tri-tip roast? Should we give one of those away for free? I love a good Santa Maria tri-tip. Yes, oh, they're fantastic. So use the code in response, one word, and we're going to throw in a free 32-ounce, a two-pound tri-tip roast in your cooler for free. How about that? Sounds like a steal. Love it. We'll see you next week.